interventions are made uh, from people, from the eye science, and to do that service. Depends, then, on the depends on the discipline. Uh, depends on the discipline. Depends on the development, on the arm parts of the brain. But on the other hand, it's interesting to see that sometimes retirement communities can do very well in this because there is no hierarchy and they bring a lot of knowledge but no sense of trying to control. We should document. Age is the hierarchy. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> saying if they're all retired. <laughs> but I believe that what Bernard is saying, uh, actually what we are not putting in the mix is the psychological part of the thing where the, the, the theory that says father, child, and parent are one and the same becomes important when you have an exercise like this and you have people with big child inside mm -hmm. who never grew up. They are, they are created all their life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And this is why we actually had a, a very quick conversation here about emotional intelligence yes. and uh, how well defined or well developed they are regardless of age. So it's not necessarily a chronological thing. It may be more about the uh, freedom or the support of the mechanism or the environment around people. So we try to make this as supportive as possible. Normally, for example, I wouldn't have tables like this, right? We would have tables in groups where you could actually do things and do things in different. I think we've done quite well considering what we had to work with. Okay, I don't want to hold up too much, but that was basically what we were talking about and the the idea about we only are going over it very quickly discussing the backgrounds and, and how that actually and how different disciplines demand different focus and what they need to actually thrive. So you've all been in working situations where different disciplines require different mechanisms and skill sets. What we're just trying to open, just very quickly show underneath is that the soft system, the, the, the exchange, the skill sets that you need to actually develop over time to work with other groups of people, and that's something that um, is not so obvious. You've got to find different mechanisms so please, all of those things, I hope you wrote that down in there, so we'd like to see it. Okay, and, and again, the usual thing that the communication <coughs> skills and the, the soft analysis skills are often just as important as the hard knowledge. It's to, yeah. And the management skills, the people to conduct the, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a manager, in fact it often is, yeah. but somebody who can actually conduct a group session without taking it over. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. But you need all the different types of things. I mean, what we're looking at here is a lot of why questions, but we're also exploring how those why questions interact with the how and what. You, you've got to find ways of actually communicating those things, and on multiple different levels. And again, because of the complexity of the different types of environments that we live in now, we've got multiple layers that occur simultaneously, and how do we do that? Uh, again, we, we're going into a scenario now about governance, and this is going to be described, we're going to be playing around with the idea of scenario and um, siloing. So uh, this first, in dealing with cultures and layering and complex environments. Okay, have a good look at this picture, everybody. <laughs> there's a lot going on in come this on, picture. Come up and look closer if you need to. <laughs> there's, there's a lot happening in this picture, right? And what I want you to do in this, this next part is actually we're going to do it, first of all, before we get into this really serious nothing, I want you as a group to describe what happened. What's going on in this picture? Please tell me what, what's, please wrap the context around it. Please give me the environment, the background. Um, you have to be a bit creative. I don't feel that you have to describe everything. This is another one. Not description. <laughs> 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 so get together in the next just give five or ten minutes quickly. Get your story together so that you can tell us an elaborate story about living problems. What's going on here? Ready to go? 
in the photo, but we decided that what are we doing? First of all, we all got antagonistic. We were uncomfortable with the incongruence. So what do we do as humans when we are confronted with incongruence? We do one of two things. We jump to the metal level. Somebody said, that was photoshopped. So that's a metal level jump. All of a sudden, we're not trying to be pulled into this weird combination of contradictory entities. We're jumping out so that we feel comfortable. And then somebody else said, how many pixels are in that picture? <laughs> and even the identification of this is incongruent. There's so many, there's layers. These are all metal level jumps that we do. The other thing that we can do to feel comfortable with incongruence is we can try to fabricate, fabricate congruence. We can write a story, make a story. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague who came up with a story to connect it all together. Okay, so I got to go into some backstory. This yellow thing is that guy's chew toy. <laughs>
thinking the dog should protect. Ah, but if you look at it again, you see that there's a kind of uh, interference. These people do certain things, they have their own tradition in the forest, and then they have to overpower the modern, I mean, they are trying to interfere with mod, uh, modern life. So this child looks like a student dressed in a modern kind of way, and was still looking at the dog that was supposed to protect the child. And then, but because she was overpowered, she was running and still looking back, looking for help. Now we see again this pro prohibition. So in the real sense, the people that worship or do whatever in the bush, they are trying to prohibit the new things that are coming. They are trying to walk against change. And then we see higher, H-I-R-E-D, this particular man with the dogs that actually try to overpower new things that are coming were hired by the people in the forest. And we see again, like I mentioned before, school child was paid, that is, this school child and this paid dog, and then academic school. We see the child is carrying an academic school and was running. The tradition in the bush is trying to walk against change, but the child was still determined to bring a change. And then finally, disappointment. You see disappointment because the child, as the child was running, the child was looking towards the dog, thinking the dog would protect her, but the, that protection was not there, and so the child was not running. Thank you so much.
supply chain has been disrupted because of a major hurricane, I think you would call it here, a cyclone in other parts of the world, a big storm. Um, and so there's an issue. There's a food supply chain problem, and each of your groups is going to get a secret word, and that's what you are. This is you're going to be given an agency that you belong to or something that you are. You must keep this secret within your group, please, and discuss how you're going to solve the problem of getting, um, what should you be doing? The, the food supply chain is broken. Who are the people? What are you going to do? What is the kind of problems you're going to look at? How are you going to con contact? All of these sorts of things. So you've got to come up with a scenario protecting that. Um, and each one of you will have a secret name of a <coughs> Please don't tell each other. Within the group you can. Halfway through the exercise, I'll get up and one of you can go and interview each of the other groups and then report back to your own group what they said. Without revealing the... No one can reveal it only within your own group. Do you understand? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and there are some additional... <coughs> okay, so each group, you will get a name of an agency that you are responsible for, right? You will try and write down all the things that you discuss and convey, all the things that you will be responsible for in this type of situation <coughs> to cover all contingencies, right? So, yep, and then when you've done that, halfway through, one of your members can go into the other groups uh, and ask questions, but you can't, be t you can't tell anybody outside your group who you are. Two questions. Yeah, first one is country, second one is physical environment. Is it rural, is it urban? No, there's no country. We don't get any of that. Okay. But those hugely change the dynamics. Yeah, they do. Do. So you select one. You okay. do. That, and here are not determinants, but just some hints. A few things you might want to look at. And the last one says that it may be more interesting for you and for the group if each of you assumes, if you're not, a if you're a homogeneous group, then each of you should think of assuming a persona or a role in this situation to make the discussion more interesting. If you're heterogeneous already, you already have different interests, but just, just let it fly.
government. You know it? We are the National Transport talking a lot about um, people management mm -hmm. from the very beginning and um, that was the single largest problem that we were going to be addressing was people management. Okay. Distribution, access, defining the problem very, very closely, um, having plans in advance in terms of preparation so that things could be addressed, um, places to look at the emerging um, con content and places where we could meet as a team to access and develop plans as it flows because nothing ever <coughs> survives. You know, you put on lovely <coughs> plans in place in the beginning and you're 15 minutes into the situation and it has changed. Yes. <laughs> so okay, so that's a direct summary. Um, who do we think? Any people talk to this big group? Any ideas? Quick place. EMA. Emergency management. Emergency management agency. So, who are you really? National Water Department. National Water. National Water. So, there's the entire. National Water. 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 Okay. We, we should qualify that, though, because we had a number of people in the group who've actually experience with the kind of situation we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So we brought expertise to the process. Excellent. So, and, and lots of really good ideas. Yeah, um, part of the reason why there's various different scenarios is because, um, yeah, yours truly as well has experienced these different levels. Um, I'll very quickly summarize this because we're running over time. Yes, go ahead, please. So just an input to Oh, yes. I realized that there was a kind of, and they say there's a kind of uh, strategic planning thinking. But apart from that, there is also the operational level yes. in terms of managing production. Then, then to look at the whole kind of uh, managing the whole yes. chain yes. of uh, the chain of logistically and so forth. But you may lose also in both logistics. Yes, it has a lot to do. Beautiful, beautiful summary. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, my concern is contamination, um, viability for life. We're worried about mass chaos due to the losses of this. Um, some of our solutions is we've got to fund science to store. How are we going to distribute it? How do we determine whether it's clean and dirty? Because you have to have a dirty for certain things, you have clean for viability of life. Um, our other solutions are education, certain kind of disasters, or disaster planning and policies. Mock drills versus table drop drills where you take in multiple disciplines and different agencies mm -hmm. and do a mock disaster drill. So you have the lower level like fire, EMS, police, EMA, and different levels of different counties and cities bring together in case something happens. Okay, who are they? Local disaster planning who at the uh, city and county level. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Local water. We have to determine clean and dirty. Dirty is for wash, clean is for cons consumption. Okay. Shit, it don't feel like you realize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just one of one. Okay, we have all the food, and our concern is we are worried about how we're going to get it distributed to the population. Anyone talk to this group? Yes. Who do you think? Corporate agriculture. Yeah, we're farmers. Okay, they're the local farmers. So basically, um, this was a really, you know, very short version of something that actually I take a lot longer to do. Um, you can understand the different layers. The different
different perceptions of, of the different types of activities which overlap consistently. The layers involved, and it is so important that the question of um, siloing, actually, community, and I mean the broader sense of community is that we've been talking about this afternoon, how that all interacts and the complexity <coughs> of the layers of each other. So that's it. Um, no, one more thing. I think we should applaud every group. Yes. <laughs> One talk sounds interesting, and I go in, and some of these other talks are really quite revealing. So take some chances. Figure you'll learn something. Figure something is going to interact at some point. Figure the success rate isn't quite what you'd like it to be. Don't worry about that. 1%, 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration, right? You've got to put in the effort. Try, if you can, when you go to these talks, even if you don't want to ask it, to think of an intelligent <coughs> question for each talk. If you don't want to ask, and you think it's important enough, try to co co corner the author, the presenter, later, and ask. Everything works. Talk to some other people in the meeting, in the room. Paraphrase Yogi Berra, you can learn a lot just by listening. Uh, it's also very important to stress adaptability, agility, forming plans, partly seeing how they work, figuring out requirements, and then going back and figuring out the other requirements, and then going back and figuring out what the requirements really were. <laughs> then going back and figuring out how they worked with what the materials you were given, the local conditions, as Susu said with the spaghetti, if we had been doing this in Las Vegas, we wouldn't have had the problem of the spaghetti towers that looked like this. Very sensitive to evolution, things changing as the environment changes, as information changes. As you get new inputs from other people, reflect. Always think, what did I do? How did I do it? How can I learn from what went right? How can I learn from what went wrong? How can I learn from what opportunities I passed up when I took one track? How can I learn from what the other groups did or interpreted or thought? And sometimes, and this was the, my keynote two years ago, you have to go backward to go forward. You have to look back at what people have done in the past. And in fact, that keeps happening with uh, computer memory. Right? It keeps going back, and or computer terminals. They keep going back and forth between the just the terminal interacting and a box that contains all the memory and all the programs and things in between that keeps getting fancier and fancier. But, and it keeps having more interaction of modes, but there is an interaction. And you have to go back and look and say, well, what were the concerns back when I did this? Do they still apply? 
if not what replaces them? Are there things that I wouldn't think of now that were thought of back then and are still relevant? Okay, what we really like, and notice this, unfortunately we did not get to having long narrations about process and product on the spaghetti tower, <coughs> but if anyone had, did write that up seriously or think about it seriously, again, please get in touch with us. Every piece of information is valuable. So the last thing we want to leave you with, and I'll be distributing these, we can make more copies if necessary, but I was going to put one per table or one per group or a couple per group, is a summary of some key words and key thoughts to think of as you go through this conference and as you carry forward what you've learned. It also has the email addresses for the two of us, so anyone who wants to just email us on anything you've thought seriously from this workshop or anything that this workshop made you think of differently as you go forward in the conference, please tell us. We'll be delighted to know. Okay. I learned more by listening. I don't usually learn things from people who agree with me. So feel free to say this whole thing is a piece of nonsense. I have a couple more of these left, so if anybody really wants them, uh, we can get them and maybe we can get a couple more copies made. But, some groups using more knowledge than others in this last project. It was interesting. Lots of things to think about. As I said, I have a couple more copies. If anybody doesn't get a copy and wants these thoughts, I will be happy to email it to you if you give me a card. You can put them in the back and they can pick them up. Just so that you know, there's certificates for everyone. Uh, yeah. Don't be back.